Yes. Is that so? All right. Um, so consent calendar, um, 30 p.m. Yes, that's there's um there's a letter from Casa about thank you for the donation. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a while ago, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. A letter from North Hampton. That was from their planning staff about a state um bill to change oh. um how uh -huh. land use is regulated. Yeah, I saw that. And then the county budget will adjust that today or yesterday or something. Yeah, yeah, it's just because I wanted you to know that the public hearing on that is coming up before the next meeting on, I think, the 22nd. So I have paper copies if you want to review them. I already um, printed it's online. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, do we, owe, do we usually go to that? Um, you haven't been going to that. Nobody has been going to that. Once upon a time, Ed used to go sometimes. But, um, or, um, um, Dick Wasson used to go to, I think, sometimes. It's an opportunity to have a voice as an individual or um, mm -hmm. as a collective board about how you feel about their budget. So, um, I mean, it's only three percent, or three point well, something percent. I right, but just like your own budget, you know, yeah. how, how does everybody feel about that? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, at it, I don't know the it, I mean, some things look really high, but you know, then when you looked at the next part of it, it was breaking it down. I, so, I mean, okay, we can talk about that. All right. Okay, so is police coming? Um, I don't know. So, is he doing, you don't know if he's doing the non public then either, right? Or is that just. Well, it was his cold? intent to be here, okay. but he may not be aware of our 6 o'clock start time. Oh, oh, okay. Did she speak community input? So, I did. <laughs> community input? <laughs> which um, may or may not be a heavy meeting. We haven't heard from the hospital okay. about whether or not they're going to meet, but you are meeting at 6 that night for the public hearing on the transfer station ordinance revision. Okay. So if... Um, I think we should have them. Yeah, yeah, so we'll just do it immediately following the public hearing. So if he's here for 6, then that we can immediately follow it if you want to tell him that. Okay. All right. And so where am I going now? So to the warrant right after that, under... I want town administration right under. Warrant two. Yep. Yep. Got okay. it. Okay. So I printed the warrant for you as it stands now. There are a few things that I would like for you to consider. Um, you don't need to have this all figured out tonight, but you only. Yes. yes. Um, but it is due to be published and set with the state um, by the 27th, which is your next meeting night. So. Mm -hmm. That's fine if you have something last minute to approve it on the 27th. It would be better to have it figured out before then, mm -hmm. but that leaves only this meeting and that meeting. Mm -hmm. So um, left to be um, figured out, I have some language to, um, do you like the language of the transfer station ordinance um, 
that's just something to think about. Um, we have to um, summarize it to some degree, just like with the zoning ordinance amendments. So um, we can summarize that differently if you want to. Um, consider the order of all of the articles, because there is some strategy about having them this way or that way or another way. So if you want them in a certain way, let me know. Right now I have petition warrant articles after all of our zoning and transfer station ordinance, all of our ordinance amendments. Um, but I can put them at the end or after something else. Okay, so George is here. Do we want to break? Oh, so we sure. Can go and see back out in sand or whatever you're doing. Yeah, you know, consulting. It's just, I, I, I need to talk to you, but I just don't, I don't think we get the time. Okay, so you don't want to do it now. Well, I don't. We can do it right now if you want we to do, do it right, right now. Couple minutes, sorry. Yep. Okay. Okay. sorry. We have to go non-public. I'll move. We'll go into non-public session for RSA 91-A, colon three, section two, letter A, personnel. Okay. Roll call. Miles. Yes. Denise. Yes. Okay. We're non-public. Thank you for being here. licenses the town needs to sign. One is for Dover Bowl and one is for the American Legion Post. This is a yearly license that we issue to them. They've already paid their $100 to the town also. Okay. So do we need, a, do we need to do a motion and accept them? you want to do a motion uh, sure. I move that we um, sign Dance and Entertainment License number 20-001. Uh, to the American Legion, Post 47. I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 And I move that we sign Dance and Entertainment License Number 20-002 to Dover Bowl. I'm supposed to be signing this, not you, right? You're signing it, yes. Into the state? 13. Okay. Uh, I second it. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Senate for another $400 minimum checkup like we've been doing for the last five years. It's just time to get rid of it. We're going to get rid of it later this year when the new car came in anyway, okay. but we'll just have to do it earlier and then swap it over. Okay. And the standard price for that is $5,100, and that will come, that's built into our equipment. Yep. All right, I move purchase order 1887 to the watch guard for $5,000. Is it 100 or 200? 100. 100. $5,100 uh, for in cruiser camera system for cruiser 74. Seconded. Any further discussion? No. No? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Six, made up to Rogers Auto Body, uh, cruiser number 24 on the tailgate around the keyhole. It's developing a uh, great big rust spot. Uh, two months ago it was about the size of a dime, it's now about the size of a half a dollar, or so of a dollar, I should say. And it's right around the keyhole, so I knew they were planning to get rid of that car. It probably won't be until December of 2020, um, but I'm afraid if it rusts anymore, eventually we're going to lose the ability to use that, that key lock. So for, $250 or less, uh, Rogers Auto Body can take care of that. And that will come out of our vehicle maintenance line item. Uh, move purchase order 1886 for Rogers Auto Body for up to $250 for repair of Cruiser 74. I'll second it. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Our 
20 vehicle arrived last Friday, four months later than originally planned. It is now down at the two way getting the lights and everything put into it. So hopefully we'll have it Friday, if not Monday of next week. Okay. So, that's all that I have for you. Anything for me? Thanks, so, yeah. yeah. No. Good Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Fire. Hello. 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 Yep. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Uh, how are the roads? It's like the state's uh, been found. I'm full of down here. Of course, George. His other cohorts are out there. Freezing yeah. drizzle stuff mm -hmm. kind of took hold, so uh, people must be uh, adhering because we haven't been called to anything. So I can see that good. Yeah. And then we get out of time. I have two purchase orders here I want to take care of. Um, first one is, and basically this is just for a new year, 2020, so now start all the so all the associations that we belong to. Mm -hmm. uh, they want their dues money, so that's that's what this is for. Uh, the first one is uh, 1766. It's to uh, Seacoast Chief Fire Chief Fire Officers Mutual Aid District, and that's uh, our annual dues for this year, 2020. Uh, and that amount is for 300 dollars. Comes out of our association dues line item. All right. I will move purchase order 1766 to Seacoast Fire Chief Officers Mutual Aid. For three hundred dollars for the annual dues. I'll second it. Any further discussion? Yep. Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Certified firefighters. Uh, first one, who's that? Who's sitting there first? 
Jason Roy. He just finished, graduated well, about, about a month ago, a month ago yeah. from uh, the class that was running by, by the State Fire Academy. And, and the second gentleman is Matt Blair. And, uh, he just got done graduating. Actually, he just got his, he's in the military, so he had to go a roundabout way. Some of his scheduled training days were conflicting with his having to do his military duty. Mm -hmm. So uh, Larry Straffin, who runs the program in North Burke, we have two people in now. He went through, jumped through a lot of hoops so he could make sure that he had all the certifications done. And he's holding his stuff tonight because Larry came down this evening and handed him his certification nice. for certification. So these two guys are 100% certified. And we can use them as needed you know, within the department. So awesome. I wanted you to, to meet our two newest fully certified firefighters. So okay. if, if you all have a moment, if we could break for a photo opportunity that it is, can we get you five gentlemen and... <laughs> Should we get our state record? Yeah, state record. Oh, yeah. You should be a part of that. Thank you, Jerry. Why not? Select board members, do you want to be part of that group? Well, the PD always gets this stuff. Oh, now we're thinking. Your favoritism you here, right? I'm a little taller than you, so I kind of get my hands on. Oh, yes. Thank you. Okay, that's good. 
Because yeah. Yeah. you are really the one that has the most say in Pretty it. Pretty much. Because you're doing the interviewing, you're doing the processing, yep. you're just getting the blessing on the board. Exactly. So. And, that, and that discussion today with, with Caroline about, because when they come into the, into the fire station, you don't understand how that process mm -hmm. works. We have a review board where a new member comes in, they fill out their application, and they go through a review board, which is four members of the department. Basically, if that's the first time that they meet, they let them know what they're expected to do, what they're up for, how much training this is going to take, and, and the whole game on that. And they go through a chief's interview with me. After I get a recommendation from the review board, they say, well, no, or yes, or maybe you want to talk to them. We do a background check through PD. So that's the initial part of what we want to do. But there's some other components of that down the road that Carol and I had a discussion on that we're probably going to need to add to that if this flies. I know one more year it's on an elected end of it, yes. and I get that. And if this all happens, then we switch over to 2021 as a uh, appointed position. Uh, and as we're going to do new hires, I think the thing Pono we need to add to it is uh, some sort of physical uh, medical clearance before we consider them also. And I'm not saying go get a full-fledged, you know, thousand dollar physical. No, but they would need to go to someplace like Seacoast Ready Care and at mm -hmm. least get themselves um, checked out that there's no uh, issues that we may run into down the road. Kind of like a DOT type of physical. I was going to say it was similar. And DOT does them over there, right? Yeah, yeah. that's what Seacoast yeah. Ready Care does. So, I'm not going to start that process now, but I just want you to kind of realize that that's probably coming mm -hmm. as another component to this when we, if we switch over. And the fact that I'll do the research, find out, you know, costs and what it's going to entail. Because the only thing that I had an issue with that is we have such a transient group. Mm -hmm. We hired off a lot of folks and after three or four months they just disappear and this isn't for them. So I kind of hate the idea of us having to put all that bill and just watch the money go away. So um, a contract issue may be something that we want to look at. It's like, you know, they pay for half of the physical to show that they're really dedicated and want to do this. Mm -hmm. Or we make sure we get a specified amount of time out of them mm -hmm. before they're allowed to leave or we'll mm -hmm. recoup what yeah, we can work on that a little bit. Yeah. It, I mean, it's like, I, I see what your point is, though, because, yeah. So, and Primex, do, do they? Uh, they don't do any reimbursement of uh, physical or anything because they're not under our plan. They're our oh, health trust. trust. No. Oh, health trust, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no. Health trust. So they're not under our plan. They're only under the uh, plan that covers them in Yeah, well, we can look on that. Yeah, I mean, that's coming down the road. That's something you would do for a 2021 budget. Right. You know, because you're not going to start, start it until March of 2021. That's have all that information in place. I mean, I know, I, it, five people over the course of a year, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is what I'm thinking that may come in and have to go through this process and then we'll start them down the road. And the consideration, if they have their own medical plan, too, that may cover that, sure. then that, you know, might be yep, something that we can do it that nobody's going to have to pay anything out of pocket. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. just something I'll start getting the information gathered up and have it ready to go. Mm -hmm. One other thing I wanted to bring up is uh, Primex and trainings. Some of the members of the department, you know, we try to do it on an annual basis, and I don't know how long it's been. And well over a year, maybe it's something we want to set up a dual fire station that we did with that driving thing that Primex did, sexual harassment. Oh, that would be wonderful. Yes, that's uh, a great one. I know we've done it before, almost a semi-annual and annual basis, so if we want to, I thought is that we could set something like up, a la what we did with that last one, um, we can make enough room and have everybody come up and get the town as a whole. I think that's a great idea and we mm -hmm. all need to do it, but yeah. the, you know, my question for the board is, um, are we mandating that everybody go? I think we should. I think we should if they're employees yeah. of I would, the town. I would recommend that. Mandated. I just, okay. Yeah. Um, they're all employees of the town, so they should be. It's kind of like a checkbox I think the town needs to maintain and, yeah. and show that that stuff's happening. That's happened. So and that's or something. sign something that they participated in that program and have it on file in here. Right. So, would you be willing to... We'll um, host it at the station. And um, do you want me to get in touch with Primex and see if they have somebody who can come here? Yeah, I don't know if Witham does that or not, probably, because this is kind of like the area Dave Witham. I'm sure he can do it. Come down and spend, you know, the hour, hour and a half, whatever it was, so we'll go do it before. Is that Dave Witham? Yeah. yeah. What's that? Is that Summers with Dave Witham? Yeah, yeah, he works with Primex. Oh, yeah? yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. the one that did the driver training. That oh. they had at the fire department oh, okay. last year. Yeah, he's been there forever. So I'm sure it'll probably be the, it'll probably be the that does it. 
unless, unless they have somebody specifically that does it. Mm -hmm. I'll, give, I'll find out. That's excellent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good idea. Okay. Yep. Yep. I'm good. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, good. sir. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming. Thank you. All right. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, one thing, you know, you don't think about it, but on the certificate it says 233 hours that it took him to get his level one and bottom. 233 on his own time. Yeah. All of that. So another thing a lot of people don't realize how much that these guys give. Mm -hmm. Kind of reinforces some of the other things that we discussed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Good, Good night. night. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. All right. Where were we? Warren. Warren. So you still you still want to go? Right? I don't. I don't want to be here all night. Whether it's still there. So do we want to? What are we? I'm sorry. Where are we? Um, the warrant. Okay, we still have to do. Oh, we have to do the warrants. Yes. Yeah. I think okay. we can continue to get it get it started. It started. Um, so we take out the order. So, where so we put petition. Right. So to my mind, the, if it's not highlighted, then I think I have the language worked out. Okay. Which does not mean don't edit. By all means, do read it and mm -hmm. make sure you agree with that. But um, we had we received three petition warrant articles today. I'm anticipating a fourth tomorrow, which is the deadline. I've I've uh, inserted those petition warrants. They're noted as petitions. They yep. are. 7, 8, and 9. Um, I'm plugging in number 10 to be um, the next one that I anticipate, and then we'll go to the operating budget. The operating budget is highlighted to remind me that um, the budget committee might revise it, so we need to make sure that the oh, okay. amount is correct going forward to the deliberative session. Um, the stormwater asset management warrant article is, um, is boilerplate language that allows you to borrow, though I it, I don't anticipate that you would because you wouldn't need to finance $30,000. We could handle it with cash flow. So um, I'm trying to figure out if we can parse that down some and get rid of that authority. Um, you still need the authority to, um, to apply for the Clean Water State Revolving Fund, which is a loan, um, but it looks like you're financing $30,000 in order to operate while you're getting that loan or something. So I'm just looking for a little clarity about that language because with, um, I anticipate that as long as you're, you're, you're applying for a loan that you're going to need at least a two-thirds vote, but it would be helpful if it didn't have to be a three-fifths vote, which is how it's written right now. So, um, three-fifths is... Right? Yes. Um, so that would be better than two thirds. You're right. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> You're right. Like six percent. Thank you. All right. Yeah, you don't do math in public. Um, <laughs> so then we're left with the explanatory note. I want to make sure that you are reading and understanding the explanatory note underneath. I'm not sure if that is going on the ballot. I don't know if we're allowed to put that much text yeah. on a ballot in, in that form, like as an explanatory note in that way. Um, but it is important for the board to know that you are um, obligated through this program to budget in future to protect this item that will be created through this project um, by, by um, by budgeting for that. So, so this, it's a loan slash grant, right? Right. So it's a loan, but then um, if you follow, th if you um, if you create what, yeah, if you do what you're supposed to do, then there's 100% loan forgiveness. So it operates much like a grant, but it really is applying for a loan and then proving that you met all the criteria mm -hmm. and then getting reimbursement. And so for that reason, you're authorized to get a loan in case you need a loan to manage that while you're waiting for reimbursement. Mm -hmm. But I can't imagine we would do that. Because we would have the cash flow to just do the project and wait for yeah. reimbursement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm looking for clarity about that. Um, 
from us or you? No, um, from Ohio Tan. Okay. Okay. Um, I've I've worked out the language for both of the police cruisers, so I think we're good. Okay. Um, I highlighted the two-third majority vote on Article 14 because I'm not sure why that's necessary where you already have the leases, the leases already authorized. So you're just asking for funding. Um, but I talked to DRA today and that's what she said, but I want to double check with her because that doesn't make sense with her. Um, but so... Because you'd have, you would have to use your operating budget, which isn't, right? I mean... If we don't take it from CIP, it has to come from our operating budget, which isn't accounted for. So why would we have to do that if it's already been pre approved? Well, if I'm understanding your question, then I learned something today, which is that they really want you to put on the ballot every year every payment of oh. the lease. So for Article 15, the new cruiser, um, we need to remember to put on the warrant for the next two years, you know, lease payment number two out of CIP, lease to payment number three out of CIP. But if it fails, if it have fails, to then you have to out find it. Of the yes. Budget, which yes. isn't a good thing. Correct. So why does it have, have to be two thirds? Well that's why I would prefer it not to be two thirds yeah. and I'm gonna ask about that because I don't understand. Typically higher majorities are required for um, multi-year commitments like financing. So where that multi-year commitment was already made the prior year, the lease itself was approved. I'm not sure why you need that again. The two thirds. two thirds. Right. right. So yes. so that's why that's higher highlighted. I'm looking for clarity for that. But um, we need it in the next one because it, it's authorized in the three year lease. Yes, okay. that's why it's not highlighted is because okay. I, I, that is necessary. So the other thing that you can do tonight is go through all of these articles. Everything that you all um, I'm assuming that everything that is not a petition warrant article, you are recommending. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, since there seems to be a consensus about that. Um, it would be helpful if you wanted, if you felt ready to do so. Um, do you want to add a recommendation or not recommendation to the petition warrant articles? And and you don't have to take that up tonight, where we're still expecting another. Yeah, I'm not but ready. but we have to. You do not have to. You, you don't have just, to say you do or don't. You, you don't. You don't have to. You don't have to say anything. You can be silent on it. But you do have the power to add it if you want to. So I just want to put that out there. So, so can we just talk about Article 7, the, I'm sorry, 8, elderly exemption? Yes. So the exemptions go up for, the, yes. for these age groups. Yes, so, so what it's saying is two things. It's saying both, if you approve of this, then two things are going to happen the people who qualify are going to get a higher exemption. Okay. Um, so in other words, a higher dollar value, a, a dollar amount of value will be reduced from the value of the property for tax assessment purposes. And that also, in order to qualify, you can earn more money and have more money in assets. So in other words, more money, will, more people will qualify um, because you, you're taking people who now earn more and have more assets. We probably don't have any any way to forecast when this it, is going to yeah. you know. So all I, I can say about I would it is, need to know that before I would recommend it. I mean, if this is going to put a hundred thousand dollar dent in our revenue. Well, there's no way to know this because you have no idea right. how who's many. Apply. Well, who's going to apply? What is their income? Like, how many? What is our demographic right. really of Rollinsford? How many? more people would qualify if we did this, we, and, and, and would those people apply? That There's no way to know. Great, okay. So what you're saying is they can have 180,000, up to 180,000 in assets and make up to 50,000 married, 50,000 in income. Mm -hmm. As proposed. As proposed. And then if they get that, then they qualify for the benefit listed above that. Those dollar amount reductions from the value of their property. 
and their asset is including their home. It does not. It does not include their home. It does not include the value of the home they live in in Rollinsford. If they have a second home or another home or an RV or anything else, yes, it qualifies. But not the home they live in. Have we looked to see what, what other areas did? That seems fine to me. I, I don't um, know why, but it just seems awfully hot. We're, we're, the last time I looked, we are in the middle or toward the low end. Okay. So, you know, it's an interesting conundrum. If you, if you, um, more people qualify, then other people bear that burden with a higher tax rate. Right. Um, but also, who are you attracting to live here? And what does that do to your assessed values? Mm -hmm. There is there is a bigger picture effect to that that most people don't realize, and and I don't have any data to support what I'm suggesting, but you know th there are trends that suggest that um, it, it um, families are less likely to come here because there's a higher tax burden, and you'll get more older people because they have the benefit and they want the benefit. Mm -hmm. um, but it just makes a higher burden for people who aren't elderly, so it, it drives up the tax rate. So you mm -hmm. get more, yet more elderly. It's it's kind of a cyclical, like potentially. I, I don't, you know. And we can't modify it because it's by petition. Correct. No, that's not true. You well, you cannot modify it, but deliberative session can modify it. Oh. Okay. Okay. So roughly in that first category, assuming a tax rate of twenty four. About a nine hundred and sixty dollar additional benefit. No, total benefit. No, additional eight forty and seven twenty, respectively. So, so it, it would be interesting to know, like, what is the what is the median income of Rollinsford? What is the median age of a Rollinsford resident and? Um, you know, communities are, you know, what goes on in communities our size. Um, you know, I, I, I can't comment on how what's proposed relates to anything like that. Right. Okay. okay. That being said, we haven't looked at or revised the, this benefit and these standards in a very long time. Yeah, that's no, what I'm so, that's so it's worth that's looking true. at for sure. Right. But I just think that we could have maybe done it in a little smaller steps. But, I mean, it's, it's a big jump. Well, the deliberative session can decide yeah. that too and modify it. You know, someone should have come in to the board and discussed it with the board before doing petition articles. It might have had this already taken care of and not had it be on the wall. Well, um, that's true. Also, um, I sent it to Chad just to make sure that it doesn't exceed any kind of statutory yeah. limits. Conversation is. What is a sports book? Isn't yeah. that that new thing that just got passed where it's you can bet on um, on professional sports now? Like simulcast? Or well, I don't know what a sports book it is, but I mean, I thought it was done all online, but I don't know no. if it is or not. I mean, I you can do it right now. I don't know if it is or not, but it is something that is licensed for the state. You have to have a location where they want to come do this at your place. It's not something that you can just choose to do. You have to, you know. So they don't have to name the person who is the petitioner? That, well, is that, isn't that a location in which they wanted to have it? Only within the town of Rollinsburg? Well, well, it's not only within the, they, they, you know, do we want to allow it in Rollinsford is the question. Right. right. So I could do it in my So then do they have to do step two? We wanted to have it be at the American Legion or the Dover Bowl? They don't have to say. They it's don't either, have to say. It's they don't have to say. Only in Rollinsford. Right. So, so then if it's allowed in Rollinsford, then anybody, any establishment that would qualify for a license can apply for a license. So that's different than Keno, because you have to give a location when you did Keno. Right. I don't think so. Well, yeah, you have to have you have to sell alcohol. Well, there's that. I mean, yeah. they have whatever the state says are the standards for mm -hmm. having a license. But, but, but when it went on petition, didn't it list the locations? I don't think so. It didn't. 
This is exactly, he took the word off from the other the one? Kino. Okay, but the, then the state law for Keno is that it has to, it has to be a bar or, or a place of they have uh, restaurants. Right, it can't just be anywhere. Or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I want to I want to bring your attention back to um, Article 18 is the next highlighted item. Um, I'm. So I talked to Peter Mishu, who directed me to somebody else at the New Hampshire Preservation Alliance, who is also leaving, but gave me slightly more information, which I've passed on to you. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm asking follow-up questions of somebody else there. So, you know, the question really at this point is, how much money is going to get the information that we want so that we make sure that we get the warrant correct? Mm -hmm. We do have a little more time in that... You know, we can. We have to present this whatever it is that you decide is reasonable based on really conjecture at this point um, to bring to the public hearing and the budget committee, and then later to the deliberative session. At least the deliberative session, we can modify it if it looks like we're way off. Mm -hmm. um, so it's highlighted because I haven't worked. I, I'm not really sure about that dollar amount. Um, although I, I think it's probably sufficient. It may be even more than sufficient, um, but then um, I need to add language to make sure that you can receive grants to offset it. So I just wanted to alert you that I sent you an email about two options, but it seems like um, if you want offsetting, if you're really going to do a big project and you want to do it um, in a historically respectful manner, then the way to go is LCHIP, and LCHIP takes a lot of time. Well, that also wasn't it wasn't qualifying for this year. Did I read it right? Well, the deadline was like December. Yeah, okay, so, so you're a year out for applying, mm -hmm. and yeah. then it's going to start not until um, you know. So you'll get it. You would get approval in. Um, you would apply by the end of this year. You would hear about approval and get started in, in 21, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't really go in earnest until like 22. Mm -hmm. And the other one was what? I forgot. I ran it, but I forgot what it was. It was. I don't remember the name of it, but it's for smaller projects. Smaller if projects, you wanted yeah. to just direct it toward the upstairs, yeah. it doesn't really say anything about the building as a whole. Yeah. Um, and it's faster, but it really doesn't give you what you need if you're going to change your mind and then go for the whole building. Mm -hmm. You're going to hand tie yourselves if you um, think you're going to change your mind and go for the whole building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, But the point of Article 18 is to do an assessment. Yes. It is an assessment. So that's the other thing is that you can not choose LCHIP. You can... But wouldn't we want the assessment before we hmm. apply for any kind of... They can help with that. Oh, is my okay. understanding. Okay. They can do the assessment that leads ultimately okay. to funding. So um, you could, if I understand this correctly, find another contractor to do the assessment that could still allow for um, LCHIP fundability if you want to go that route with that contractor and ultimately with LCHIP. You could do um, you know, just go with that contractor and ultimately for the assessment and then um, still go with outside contractors um, to get more information. You know, I, I still think that there, there are a few ways forward. Um, it's not completely clear what they all are and what their implications are. Yeah, but they did say that they could assist in the assessment or, or getting at somebody in Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, and, and can recommend contractors. And Based on the year of the history. What they know about it. What they know about, it. They know yeah. about the building. Yeah. So um, we may end up needing to um, write it in a generic way and um, with what we think for a dollar amount, and then mm -hmm. as things get clearer, closer to the deliberative session, it may have to get revised, which mm -hmm. is not how I would want to do things, but mm -hmm. um, the way it's going at this point. Um, I do want to, um, I, I was skipping over things that were just highlighted, but I do want to take a, a moment and backtrack to number 16, which is not highlighted, right. which is to say DRA approved the use of CIP funds for the fire extraction awesome. equipment. Right. So we're all set with that. Good. But I think 
we need to relook at that policy and make sure that we, you know, the intent is what we think the intent is, because it is, when we, when you showed me that, you know, it is kind of, I don't know if everything that we wanted to do that's on that list it would qualify, so we need to look at it just to make sure it's the policy that they use for approval of funding, correct? They, they look at that. Well, yes, but that being said, they don't, um, They, they don't look at the things. It, it, it surprised me what they what they consider important and what they consider not important. Mm -hmm. For example, if you have something that you know the document says it's for projects that are at least ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and then so so that caused me to ask, what if you think that the project or item is going to cost ten thousand dollars, and then you get a deal on it and it costs $9,000, $9,500, are you just qualifying the funding source? Mm -hmm. And she said, no, they don't even look at that. <laughs> so um, that's, you know, in, in, internal as far as they're concerned, and, and they're, not, they're not concerned about it, because it otherwise qualifies for the program, and it's about intense with the equipment, and, and it's included. And so just because, you know, the language reads as it does, it can still be interpreted. Okay. So, you know, right now, I think we're okay. okay. Um, but it's still worth reading, knowing what it says, mm -hmm. and looking. it's always worth seeing if we can <coughs> clarify. Because we were kind of concerned about this, but it, me it met the dog threshold and the years of life threshold, so I didn't even understand why it might have not have been considered well, part right. of that. You know, so... Right. Yeah. Sometimes I can't. Because it's equipment understand. and not machinery, and well, it is machinery, but I mean, different type of machine. You know what I mean? So we have, I just want to make sure that we don't right. end up doing something that we would have to come out of taxation versus okay. CIP. Yes. Um, Article twenty. Given your conversation with the police, with the fire chief, are you okay with um, RSA one forty one colon one? Um, paragraph B for structure? Yeah. It is. I, I think yeah. that makes the most yeah. sense to okay. have it mirror the way we do things yeah. in all our other departments. Okay. And so the other thing that's highlighted in that article is when do you want his elected term, when do you want this change to take place? It could be, you know, it, it would make sense to my mind that it'd be something around March of 21. It can be town meeting of 21, it can be March 31st of 21, it can be some other date in that vicinity. Well, it has. It would have to be either before or after the election day of, of March because he's done as fire chief because he's, right. he's got a term. I would say at the end of his term. Uh, or, or, you know, the week before the end of his term, you know, effective on his last day of his term or what, you know what I mean? Which is town meeting. So. Right. No, it's election day. That's Which is town meeting. Is. It's the second session. We still have town meeting. It's first. we have two part town meeting. The first session of oh, town yeah, meeting yeah, is yeah, the yeah, deliberative yeah. session. Okay, and the no, second session meeting is after that. Yeah, gotcha. Election day. So yeah, so I would say it would be effective the next day or whatever because then you wouldn't have a fire so, for um, four hours. So he would be elected until town meeting. So that might yeah, you can't put a date because it changes. Run into a logistical because we don't have a meeting necessarily the day after election day. He's going to be appointed by the board. So we can pick March thirty first, and that way elections over, but he's still serving in an elected capacity until you have a meeting between town meeting and the end of March. Yes, oh, but why can't we just appoint him like day before the election yeah. or something? You I mean, could do that too. I mean, then it, then you're not without a chief for a certain period. Well, of time. You, right. You could you could you could do it either way as long as you're having a meeting and appointing him before his term expires, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. whenever that is. So, because we could appoint him effective on the, election day on, the, uh, on our Monday meeting before the election. I think the the meet the yeah. We'll have we'll have him appointed out of the okay. Select like was meeting the Monday before the election. Okay. To be so, effective day of election. Okay. So do you like the way this is worded? Yeah, I think that's fine. I mean this doesn't 
This doesn't say. It doesn't say when it is when. because we don't have to figure but it out. He's elected until the next, until the town meeting in 2021. He's elected, and then after that, he would have to be appointed. Well, except for what you just said, which is that you can appoint him before then, yeah. effective whenever it needs to be effective. You know, you yeah, can take I the action prior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just don't want to muck up the, the hook. You don't want to Whatever get you do, it has the potential oh, yeah, for yeah. mucking up if you don't uh, pay attention. <laughs> I think we as the board need to just do it. I mean, he's going to be elected until the town meeting of 2021. We as a board, if this passes, can do it a week before and, and take care of it, I mean, and it's all could, done. We could appoint him the week after the election. It doesn't really matter when it happens. Well, you won't have a fire chief for a week. No, no, like 20, in 2020. Like, it doesn't really oh, matter. Oh, 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 I see. Um, yeah, I, I would leave it the way it is, yeah, and I we think. as a board need to just make sure it's on our file yeah. to do it, to do it. so we are right. not without one. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Um, then that is all I have to say about the warrant. If you would just otherwise um, go home and read it yeah. and um, think about order. You got the correction. I got the correction. Yes, thank you. Um, and let me know if you have other, like, if you want to restructure or have any other comments. And then um, wasn't there a question about Article 25, uh, selling surplus equipment, because we ran into this higher, the highest bidder thing, the selling um, the you can you can You can take that up and just say, um, just authorize us to sell. And get rid of to the highest bidder. I don't know what you think. To what, was the, what was the problem? Remember with the highway truck, we were ready to sell it. They listed it on Craigslist. You had a had purchase an offer. Or, a purchaser. But then, and then, oh wait, we didn't put it up oh, to bid. Oh, we didn't put it up to bid. Oh, I so yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, right. so, yeah, I would say it just authorizes the board to sell any surplus equipment and vehicles owned by the town. I mean, I mean, highest bidder ensures that we're. Kidding. But we can still do that. Right. It doesn't force us to do right, that. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. As long okay. as we're open and upfront about what we're doing. Yep. I think that that's. Okay. So, what is it? Any surplus equipment? I'm just getting I'm deleting to the highest bidder. And the word the after. To any the surplus. surplus. To sell any. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Um, so I would, um, in the interest of time, since I know there's there's a concern for trying to move this along, if you would move to F and um, consider CBA appointments, because we have a case um, that would like to be heard with a full board, and we do not have a full board to hear it. Okay. So those people have put forth their names. Um, for consideration with that last one, um, Nathaniel Leach as an alternate. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So I thought I read something in our emails that said that when you haven't got an, an this is for yes, this so, is on, is on, you can have select board members and you can have planning board members serve temporarily on the zoning. Well, not temporarily. So, so this or is the at a meeting that needs to have it to say we would have to appoint. You have to appoint them. So we, we should not have um, we should not have a revolving door of people who can make it that day, but rather um, should you really get stuck and need to appoint people um, for for the sake of clarification, there is no conflict of interest in select board members serving or in my position serving as long as I'm a resident. Um, and having up to two planning board members serve. So they encouraged us to look at other existing bodies that are um, where you have committed people and seeing if those committed people would be willing to serve here, but not temporarily. Okay, the hope so is, is the, always, the, always, the, they will always sit on it, is what you're saying. 
that they would serve the term. Yeah. And so um, that well, is the we have one on the planning. Yep. Right? So there is currently one planning board so member serving, and then Sunastasi is another planning board member. Um, Michelle Mears is a resident. She just happens to be a planner. She's consulting for our mm -hmm. planning board, but um, she's not on the planning mm -hmm. board. Um, she has planning experience, and that's helpful. Um, Nathaniel Leach, I believe, was on the planning board once upon a time. I'm not sure. He, he is a previous select board member. Um, he's got real estate experience. Um, but given that we've been having trouble for months yeah. and months now finding people who would serve, um, I'm grateful for people with that kind of experience. Okay. All right. I'll make a motion that we appoint uh, Sue Natas. Natasi. Michelle Mears as full members of the Zoning Board of Appeals and Nathaniel Leach as an alternate. I'll second that. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 So yes, okay. um, I need to um, I need to address the board with a personnel issue, okay. and there's welfare, and okay. um, otherwise I think everything else can be tabled if you want to move us along. All right, we will definitely work on purchasing policy at the next meeting. I hope. Um, yeah. Okay. And and have we decided on another meeting date? If we can clarify that in public before we do we? I mean to. Uh, you mean because next week is a Monday and, there, and that's a it's holiday? Because a holiday so that we can have more time on the warrant and then you can do what you didn't do tonight. Yep. Um, Any day next week works. Mm -hmm. Thursday's probably the best day for me. Okay. Um, Wednesday, uh, sewer and water, which I would like to attend. Um, I believe. Sewer and water next week, guys? Not this week. Next, next week. Next week. Next week. Yeah. Um, um, that's the snow date for the oh, that's public hearing. Okay. Yeah. Do I want to aim for Thursday? Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, let's do Thursday. Okay. okay. So. Do we want to do six? Six. Six. Yeah. Okay. And really, it's mostly about policy and whatever was left on there, and whatever comes in. <laughs> what date is that? The twenty-third. It is. So let's just talk about it, and then um, we'll post it once we have that figured out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep praying as soon as you can find out, and then we'll, if we could, is 6.30 better? Oh, yeah. Okay, so, it's, you know, we can do 6.30 if, if it works out to have her here. Okay. okay. And we have to make sure Jessica knows. Yes. Okay. All right, so with that... Non-public session for RSA 91A, Home 3, uh, Section 2, Letter C for Welfare, Case Number 2019-016. All right, I'll second it, and I'll do a roll call. And then I'm sorry, but I'll ask if there's comments about visitors because we're probably not going to hang around afterwards. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Roll call, Miles. Yes. Denise. Yes. Okay. So I'm sorry. We comments by visitors. Nothing. No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, so you much for chatting. Okay. Have a good night, guys. Drive carefully. Drive carefully. Yes.